The start of the race was important for the race being good in this case because Max Verstappen was in sixth. It was important that his nearest challengers on Sunday would take the lead ahead of Charles Leclerc because the Ferrari didn't have the race pace. And with Norris taking the lead as the lights went out, it allowed the McLaren to stretch his legs in the first and build up a little bit of a buffer to Verstappen. And as you can see, into the first corner, Lando had a pretty unopposed run as uh, Leclerc had lost the start. Into the first corner, Sainz and Hamilton very, very close as well as Verstappen went to the outside. But uh, Sainz managed to take the place. Verstappen couldn't come around the outside of Hamilton. And that was important as far as the race went to give the rivals a chance to, uh, to deny Verstappen what would be probably a comfortable win after uh, Saturday. It wasn't a comfortable win. And that is largely because Norris took the lead and uh, Hamilton managed to hold Verstappen back. But if we have a look back at the start, there's something more interesting in the start in, uh, in Austin. It's something I noticed last year, but this year, again, it was evident. And it begs the question, is pole position on the, uh, on the right side in Austin? Because Leclerc was jumped by Norris. But as we uh, play this through, you can see, if I pause it there, again, every single driver on the inside had a better start than the driver on the outside. So you've got Norris passing Leclerc, I've covered up there Sainz coming past Hamilton. You've got Verstappen has come straight past Russell, who didn't have a good getaway. Ocon is going to pass Gasly, and Piastri is going to pass Perez as well. And that goes the whole way down the field. So for whatever reason, on Sunday in Austin, the inside line was quicker. And that's against the theory. You can see on the grid here back, the amount of rubber marks that's laid out on the outside line here, particularly towards the, the back end where drivers have been doing more burnouts coming up to the grid. That's very, very laden with rubber should give the drivers on the clean side of the grid the, uh, the advantage, especially when the racing line for every lap comes straight down the outside and into the first corner. That's why the uh, pole position is on the outside. But if you look through historic starts, the, uh, the interesting thing is, it wasn't the first time the inside of the grid has got a, a better start. This is the sprint on Saturday. Verstappen held the lead with a huge amount of robust defence here, cutting straight across the Ferrari of Leclerc. But behind that, you've got Norris straight past Hamilton. Hamilton does well, actually, to, uh, to hold on around the outside at the first corner. And again here, you've got Sainz coming past Piastri as well. You've got Perez losing ground. So once again, the, uh, the inside had the advantage even further back. You look at 2022, last season, we, uh, we go lights out and Verstappen this time comes straight past Carlos Sainz for the lead of the race. And you've got the two Mercedes swapping positions. Once again, fifth and sixth swapping there. Even 2021, it's the same story. Hamilton this time in second on the grid, Verstappen on pole. And this was a crucial change of the lead with, uh, with Hamilton getting the start here. And again, Hamilton getting the place and it's swapping further back as well for uh, third and fourth and fifth and sixth. So whilst Leclerc lost the lead at the start, maybe the bigger thing is, should pole in Austin be on the inside? Because every year, it's very difficult for the pole man to actually retain the lead. The last time the pole man was unopposed into turn one in Austin was back in 2019, where Valtteri Bottas held on comfortably. Since then, it seems to me like it's an advantage for the inside, even though they start a little bit further back. And I don't know why, because in theory, they don't have the rubber down there either. But Norris took full advantage of that, took the lead and set up a, uh, a pretty good charge for himself in the McLaren. Lando Norris takes the lead in the US Grand Prix and Hamilton has gone down a position. Up goes Carlos Sainz to P3 as they sweep through the S's on the first of 56 laps. But it's a dream getaway for the man who's turned second place in the grid to first in the race. A couple more moments from the start back in uh, 2023 then. And Esteban Ocon was an early retirement in the race. Him and Oscar Piastri touching. And uh, let's have a look at this one. Piastri has a good start from 10th in the McLaren. And uh, here they are, the Alpine and the McLaren running down towards turn two. And so it's, it's a quick corner, turn two, should be flat out. But Ocon, he's, uh, he's keeping the foot in. And he just misses the turn in slightly, which means he's missed the apex. He's, he's running a wider trajectory. Piastri is trying to fight through and uh, gets the place, comes past. And uh, it's a clean move from Piastri at this point, but Ocon's trajectory is still washing wide the whole way through. He's not got the, uh, the grip in the front end at this corner. So as Piastri now comes to the right-hand side to, uh, to come back onto the track, there's a, a contact between the two, and that will rule out Esteban Ocon, who did have a good start from his inside berth of eighth position. Here we go on board with him, and you can see he's right on the limit of grip, coming to the braking for the first corner as well, coming past his, uh, his teammate, manages to hug the apex really nicely, and he's gained a couple of positions here. He's got Piastri now charging from the outside, 
And then at this point, Piastri is just trying to blend back onto the road because he's only just stayed on the track on the outside on that turn two move. So basically he's moving slightly to the right. Ocon is drifting towards the left. And it's actually quite the thud that uh, Esteban has then in the side of the McLaren, big whack. And uh, he also short shifts as he's doing it as well. So as he's in the, uh, the midst of a, a huge opposite lock moment, he, uh, he also just pulls the gear. So sixth, and then he's here, and he's just in such a, a panic on the steering, trying to hold it at high speed. This is a huge slide for, uh, for Ocon. It's beautifully held. He picked up a, uh, an upshift as he was doing it. Didn't unsettle the car, and he managed to, uh, to carry on. But it would be short-lived. A decent start, undone for, uh, for Ocon at turn two, and Piastri would, uh, would retire a few laps later. So that was uh, a shame for those two. But as I said, out front, it was, uh, it was race on. I don't know if we had a bit of a, a moment uh, on the on the bump or, or whatever, but um, yeah, just a bit of contact on the exit, and uh, yeah, I think it, it must have broken one of the radiators, or, or maybe it was an isolated problem. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, the, something on the right side of the car broke. It's very unfortunate because today I think there was points on the on the table, but there's only a couple of days to, for us to. Uh, to wait before we get back to racing and we can turn the page quickly and, and go back to it. 